Hey guys, uh, this is DFS Chan here to talk about February 12th, um, DFS slate uh, for League of Legends. The uh, LOL slate will have a five feature, a five game slate, um, three LPL games and two LCK games. So without further ado, let's dive in. So I posted the starters earlier today. Um, as you see, there are some big uh, heavy favorites on the slate. Um, let's see. So, let me see one second. Sorry, I, I thought I was just making sure my microphone was working, and it is. Um, yeah, so EDG is a big favorite at minus 1,400 over Team WE, who's been struggling this season. Uh, and Weibo Gaming at minus 150 as a favorite over uh, Fun Plus Phoenix at plus 115. That should be a really good game. Uh, RNG at minus 210 as a favorite over Top Esports at plus 165. And I'll, I'll dive, dive in on the rosters, but Top Esports has some interesting substitutes um, and for different reasons today. Um, and then in Korea, it's T1 versus Gen G. Um, you know, Gen G's been struggling with some uh, COVID issues internally within the team. So they will most likely be starting Young J at jungle and then Lospa in the support position, just like they did uh, their last game. And then Liv Sandbox versus Damon Kia. Damon Kia is a big favorite, as they should be, over Liv Sandbox um, uh, on the slate. So, yeah, let's dive in. EDG versus Team WE. Like I said, Team WE has been struggling. I believe they are 2-8 and eight in games, or 2-10 and 10 in games. Wow. This split. So, they're, they've been really bad. Um, they've been uh, – they've looked terrible in certain situations, too. So, it's not just the – you know, um, the funk that they're in, it really, they've been pretty bad overall together. Um, and they haven't been trying new things. Um, Shing is starting again. Um, I don't know why views keep starting. Maybe there is some issues. There are some issues with Beishang. Um, I don't know. Um, but view is starting again. And then for EDG, Flandre starting over Xiaoxing. Um, obviously, Flandre is a good player. Um, and that's not, you know, that really solidifies the top position for them. So this is the, these were the five players, five starters that won the world championship, right? So, you know, I, I fully expect EDG to win. Um, I do think um, maybe their weakness, if they have one, is in the jungle, in the top lane, maybe. Because I do think Viper and Mako is very solid. And Scout has been playing lights out. But I just do not trust Team WE's uh, top jungle uh, players there to be able to, uh, you know, take advantage of that possible weakness. Because I have seen that weakness throughout the split at e for EDG. And I think that's the reason why they're replacing Xiao Shang with Vladre. So anyway, um, long story short, I think EDG should take care of business. Um, Let's what let's look at what the kill upside is. Um, so this one, when I saw the Vegas size, the total kills over under is at set at uh, 23.5, which is really low for an LPL matchup. I know EDG is a huge favorite, but still, um, I do want to see the CKPM. So let's see. Point eight five. Uh, point eight four. That's actually pretty fast. I mean, I'm just surprised that it's at 23.5. I do think it's justified based on the fact that EDG is a huge favorite and they'll probably win like 20 to four. No, like 15 to seven, eight, yeah. It could happen. I can see that happening, but I don't know. CKPM is pretty high, man. So. If I were a streamer, I would definitely bet on the over that. Um, but 
Let me see what EDG is like in the in their wins. Well, they don't have eight out of nine wins, so probably similar. 0 0.88, 0 0.93. Yeah, so like in their wins, they're higher too. So, <laughs> and I want to see how these players match up in the mid lane. Um, just out of curiosity. I think I'm gonna do that for the, actually we, we don't have that data. I oh, mean, okay. But it looks like Shanks actually has been playing pretty well for that team. I mean, 677% KP and then 24, that's really good, honestly. So, maybe. I do want to see one thing real quick. Yeah, I mean, that's really bad. I do want to make a note of that. ADG jungle advantage plus almost 12%. ADG is has an advantage <clears throat> in every single metric on shown on here. Um, I do think, like I said, Shanks is good, but let's say Scout versus Shanks, key matchup. All right, let's dive into, I think ADG wins, so I'll say ADG should win 2-0. Yeah, I mean, I think for deep GBP, um, Team WE could be an option. I just want to go through every single matchup to see what kind of kill upside that matchup has. And obviously, if that turns out to be the lowest, I mean, there will be some LCK games that are lower. I guarantee it. But um, if amongst the LPL matchups, if that's, that's the least, uh, you know, that's the game with the least kill upside, least amount of kill upside, then, I mean, I even play Team WE because, you know, just projecting kills, even if they upset EDG, they may not score well. So, um, and ED EDG is not the type of team that will throw bodies if they're losing. I mean, they, they know how to play this game. They know how to scale. So um, I don't know if Team WE would be a good GPP play other than the fact that, you know, it would be a leverage play, ownership play because they are the get biggest underdog on this late. So without the kill upside, even if, if for ownership purposes, I don't, I don't know if I'll play that. So Weibo Gaming versus FPX. Um, let's look at the matchups for a minute before we type into the matchup. So Weibo Gaming, one plus Phoenix. I'm gonna make it over here. Gaming FPX. I'm sorry for sniffling um, on the video because um, I have a cold. I don't think it's COVID. <laughs> um, CKPM is. <laughs> yeah, that's lower. That's surprising. Um, let's given the data. Given the data, I want to see they're about similar. Yeah, I mean that's minimally different. So ED, uh, FPX has jungle control advantage slightly, and then Weibo Gaming has. Yeah, it's, this is really even. <coughs> so I want to see a mid, mid lane matchup again. Oh, uh, yeah. 
Angel versus Gory. I'm not a huge fan of Gory. I don't know why, but I'm also not a huge fan of Angel. I think both are not trash, but both are just mediocre. Um, but it looks like Angel has better numbers. I think I'm going to go... I want to look at the roster. All right, let's look at the roster. Um, the Shy, S of FM, Angel, Hunting on, yeah, so usual starters for Weibo Gaming. And then FPX is starting Shao Lao, Hu, Kled, Gory, LWX, and Hang. Kled is starting again. Um, I want to see how well he performed last series, but I remember from uh, before the Lunar New Year break, the long break that we had in the in, in the LPL, as you guys know. Um, I don't know. I like Bay Chuan so much better than Clint. And I feel like even though um, Clint played okay last series, I didn't think, I, I, I wasn't impressed as you know, with him as much as I did, I was with um, A. Twine. So, I don't know. I just don't like Clay with this roster. Um, I want to see how he did here. So, I do think Angel um, is likely, very likely. KP Clint, when he played three games, he had 66%, and so it was a 22% kill share. Mediocre. <laughs> yeah, I think H1 influenced the game more, much more. Clint and SFFM comparison. <laughs> I know Kled has a small sample size. So I do want to see the so three games he played, right? I want to see how he did. Here, a jungle control percentage. Yeah, I'm sorry, but Angel's better than Gory, and it shows that um, S of FM actually has been playing pretty well, uh, a little bit better than Clint has, just based on the small sample size. So I think I'm going to go WBG wins, maybe two to zero. <laughs> So both favorites, I know, boring. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, I just feel like I mean, it's based on the injury for team building. I don't understand. He's still on the Contract ends in November, so you don't understand. Why is it being shown? All right. Thanks. Um, The last matchup of the, the Chinese league is between top esports and RNG. And RNG is starting the same starters, Ben Wei, Xiao Hu, Gala Ming. 
But top esports, on the other hand, is starting some interesting players. Wayward, Tian. Um, so like Wayward instead of is it three six nine? No, he's gone. Who's starting? Who's been starting for that? Uh, why am I blanking? It's been a while since we've analyzed top esports. Zoom, that's right. Zoom, sorry. So instead of Zoom, Wayward is starting. Instead of uh, Xiao Peng, Tian is starting. Instead of Zhuo, Mark is starting. So it's, it's interesting. I think Joe had some uh, personal medical issues, mental health issues that he was uh, addressing in his post um, on, the, on the social media. Um, but I don't know about everybody else. I'm, I'm sure you guys can find out on the social media. I don't have that information right now. Um, so, but for, for the analysis, I don't think it's really important to analyze the players that are not playing. Um, other than the fact that it kind of tells us the context behind why these players are starting. Um, but let's, I think the more important thing to analyze is how these players are projected to play and how they're projected to score for DFS purposes um, and how much chance that they're going to give each team to win, right? So, and how much they're going to, how well they're going to mesh with the other regular starters like Knight and Jackie Love um, for them to win. So I think it's going to be a tough, tall task for top esports to pull this upset off. Um, I think they, they are deservedly uh, an underdog at plus 165. Plus they've been playing not too spectacularly. I think they're like a gatekeeper team this this split. Um, so I think they're going to lose to top teams, uh, you know, that are better than top esports, and then beat the teams that are below them on the standings. Um, and I do think RNG is much better, and they are. Um, let me see the record. They are 11 and five. Wow, that's pretty good. And top esports is five and eight. So anyway, um, yeah, so let's dive in. I do think um, Wayward, I don't really know much about him, I'll be honest with you guys. So let's look at it together, um, see what he's, how he's projected. Zoom joins, Wayward joins from Academy. Okay, so he's from the Academy, and I'm surprised he's starting over, um, what's his name, Ching Tian, who started last season a lot. So I don't know why. I don't know why. Let's look at their his match history. The Masia Cup he played in, LDL for Top Esports Academy. And he's been playing some good carry champions. So that's a good sign, I think, if he does well. But against Ben, I don't know, it's going to be a tough, tall task. They did beat RNG in the Demacia Cup. That's interesting. But I mean, 1 0 oh, and 2, 3 2 and 8 is not that great. So. Okay. I do think Ben's going to be, I mean, Ben's, and Ben's a tough matchup. And then Tian, I'm not a huge believer in him anymore. I think he's a little washed up. And I think Xiao uh, Peng is much better for top esports. And Mark, he was, he's all right. I mean, he's a, you know, you guys know Mark. He's an okay support player for my split, too. Um, he's been in the LPL scene for a while, um, but they've just been in bad form and changing a support like that for Jackie Love, I think it means, I think it has a lot more impact on, on a player like Jackie Love because of his style of playing and communication. And, you know, when he goes aggressive, you need the support that goes in with you aggressively. Because often, you know, your teammates do need to follow up, even even if it's a bad decision or bad game move, so so to speak. Your players, need, your teammates need to follow up with following with you in order for you guys to have a chance to win, right? I mean, even even if it's a bad team call from Jackie Love or Knight or whoever it may be. Um, but I don't know if Mark is the kind of guy that <laughs> will follow through. Or I mean, he might, he might. But I mean, but one or two seconds wait, and then going in. I mean, that's. 
going to cost a lot. So I just feel like the way that Jackie Love likes to play, I don't think that favors um, the situation where, you know, there's a new support. Um, and I mean, I'm sure they have scrimmed a lot together and they have practiced a lot together, but I just feel like <clears throat> it's different in the pro scene, right? So I don't think it will translate that easily. Um, so all of that tells me um, RNG wins two to zero. I do want to see some metric. Let's look at um, combined kills per minute first. Um, between these two teams, point seven four. Let's call it even in point seven five. Um, and that's like lower than. So I don't know what's up with these over unders. I mean, I think there's a, some there's some edge there's some edge there to to be gained. Um, <laughs> RNG does have jungle control advantage at 1.4. Top uh, RNG favors all of these metrics. And I do want to see something here. I think Xiaohu has done more for his team compared to Knight and with his respective team. Damage Knight has done more, has put out more damage, but I think Xiaohu is good, good enough to go at least even with him. I don't think Knight has been in good form, but then Xiaohu has been in all right form, so. And like I said, I'm not a huge believer in Tian. So, like, you see Xiao Peng, I mean, he played 11 games, and he has a 74% seven, carry KP and 21, and better than two games that Tian, Tian has played. So, I just feel like Tian is not an upgrade from Xiao Peng, unfortunately. Yeah, I think Wei is better too. Yep. So yeah, I think that supports my analysis. But at the end of the day, um, yeah, I'm, I have all favorites winning. I'm sorry, but that's that's I that's my what my analysis tells me. Um, do I have any GPP plays for the underdog? Yeah, I mean like top esports. I don't know if they. I mean, I can. They can definitely do it. They have the talent to do it. I think, but I'm not. There's some question marks, you know, in the new starters, like in the top lane and the support position for top esports, and I do think that it will hurt hurt them quite a bit. So I'm more confident <coughs> in RNG over top esports, you know, now compared to when top esports still had. Zoom in the top lane and Joe in the support position and then Xiaoping in the jungle position. I'm pretty sure RNG wins. My confidence level is pretty high for that one. And then Weibo Gaming, FPX. Yeah, I'm not a huge believer in Gory. I think Clid is the um, determinative determinative factor for FPX's chances to win today. Um, because I think Angel and Gory will probably just go about even, but I do think there is a jungle gap between SOFM and Clid. Um, but Clid has a, definitely has a, has the ability to, to match SOFM's ability too, but it's just I haven't seen it lately. And even for Gen G when he used to play in Korea before he came over to FPX, I'm not, I wasn't a huge fan of his play style either. So, um, but at the end of, I mean, but uh, I think FPX can definitely win. So FPX can definitely do it. Um, yeah, that's interesting. And and the kill upside today, it's all over. Like I said, I mean, the Vegas odds indicate the EG and WE, but 
that actually has the fastest uh, CKPM, the biggest CKPM. So uh, I just don't know. Um, yeah, maybe it's a crapshoot today, but EDG should win pretty handedly. So maybe, maybe it is going to be lower in kills. All right, let's look at T T1 versus Gen G. As mentioned before, uh, Gen G is struggling with COVID issues. So Young J in jungle is starting over Peanut. Peanut has been out with COVID. And then Lahens is out and Low Spa is in from the Academy or from the Challenger uh, team for, T uh, for Gen G. So I do think those are huge downgrades. They, I know they played okay last series where they won. But that was against a bad team. But now they're going up against the elite team, number one team in LCK and T1. So, but I do think Faker and Chovy, that's obviously that's going to be the marquee individual laner matchup to target and to watch. Um, I think Chovy has been playing much better lately, especially last series without Peanut. He had to carry the team on his back. So, I do think without Pina, Chovy will have to kind of play more of a support role to the to their jungler um, to kind of control the map pressure and everything. So I think Chovy has a lot um, to do today over T1 if they were to win. Um, but I just feel like T1 has been so lights out, except for the last series against Light. I know they gave up a gave up a game in the series, best of three series, but um, they came back and you know, they look resilient. Um, and I feel like that just could have been just like a, you know, little rough patch that they had to go through for being undefeated, but also just coming off of a long lunar, lunar New Year break. So maybe they were a little bit rusty, uh, but I think they're going to be out of the funk and be Genji today. So. So I'm going to say two to one because I do think Chovy can carry for sure. Um, I do want to see some stats here because they do have more stats for LCK. Um, so let's see. I'm sorry, that's my point. CKPM 0 0.70. So pretty low. Um, I do think T1, yeah, T1 plays slower um, than Genji, but in their wins, they play a little bit faster. 0.6, uh, 0.6, 0.73 regular, and then in a loss, 0.6, so slower. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a kind of slow matchup. I want to see um, how Genji was with Young J and Lospa. So, their average is at 0.73. I want to see. 0.82, so it's a little bit faster. And who do they play against? Sandbox. Bus has been playing pretty fast overall, so but Genji has too. So yeah, I mean, um, I think it's gonna be a little bit low scoring game. Let's look at the metrics team for teams. I want to see jungle control percentage favors Genji. With peanut though, right? Um, so one point seven percent. The marquee lane matchup, right? Joey's stats are much better. But let's look at Jungler. 
young Jaguars was pretty bad. And owner is the type of jungler that can carry when he has an advantage. Um, <laughs> there's a huge gap there. Huge, 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 huge gap. Um, And I want to see what type of jungle control percentage he might be they had last time. Fifty-four point nine. That's pretty good. It's pretty good, actually. Toby was a shaker. Yeah, but at the end of the day, I think the juggle gap is the difference and the support gap. Carry is going to dominate. So I think they're going to be playing much better today for T1. All right. I know we've kind of dragged along a little here a little bit, so I'll make the last one pretty quick. Lift Sandbox over Damakia. Um, not over Damakia versus Damakia because Damakia is most likely going to win. Uh, Kamai kills per minute. Let's look at Damakia. Lift Sandbox. Like I said, Lift Sandbox has been playing a little bit fast. Third than other teams in Korea. But 0.68 is the... So it's pretty low. Do want to see Damakia is 0.66, but in their wins, slower. And then Lift Sandbox is 0 0.70. 0 0.70, 0 0.71. So about the same. Maybe even slower. Slower. So I don't even know if I'll target this game, but uh, let's just look at this uh, metrics real quick. Um, let's look at the roster first, rather. Sorry. So so Dove should be starting, Croco, Closer, and then Ice should be starting at 80 carry. Maybe not. Um, they could sub in another 80 carry there. Um, but and then Kale for LSB and then going up against Damakia and Birdall, who should be starting over Hoya, just given the fact that they won the last game. Canyon, Showmaker, and Duck Dom and Kellen. So that's a pretty strong lineup. And I know Damakia has been playing pretty well, except for the T1 matchup, but it was against T1, the, the elite team in the LCK. So I think Damakia will thrash Flip Sandbox today based on the roster. So let's look at um, two to zero, but let's look at the metrics to see if that supports our prediction. So seven, seven point eight percent. And then obviously has been playing, playing lights out too, so. Uh, 58 and early game. Yeah, I mean, everything favors. Almost everything favors Damon Kia. Let's look at the mid laner of Damon Kia in the sandbox. So, Showmaker, much better. Let's look at their jungle blur. Yeah, I mean, Canyon should. Canyon should. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that one Kia will win. Um, I don't know if I'll play any sandbox. It's going to be a slower matchup, too, um, which does not favor. So low kill upside for the EDG Team W. I don't think so. See, like looking at all of these, the CKPM for the EDG versus Team WE is the highest. So that's interesting to me. And by a lot, I mean 0.84 versus 0.68. I mean, that's almost like 0.16 difference, right? So anyway, so I think that's an interesting my slate today. Um, if you guys enjoy the video. Um, please hit the like button down below and then hit, hit the subscribe button if you want to be subscribed to our channel. Um, this is sponsored by, you know, True DFS.
right there. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, let me know on Twitter or on YouTube or on Discord. I'll be available uh, here and there before the lock. Um, but I do like um, some of the probably most, actually most of the favorites today. Um, but if I were to make any GPP plays, because oh, often people ask me that question, right? Um, I think Gen G definitely has a shot, um, but I don't know if it will necessarily be a bloodbath because T1 is kind of like EDG where if they're down, um, they'll play and scale. Um, they won't give up as many deaths. But that also means that the game will drag on for a long, for longer, right? So there is some advantage to that to increase the kill number as the as the game is gets longer, right? So there is that, but so overall, I just don't like these matchups because they're gonna be slower. But I think that you can definitely take a chance with maybe FPX and. Top esports, if you want to. Um, Team WE, only because Shanks could carry. Um, but other than Shanks, I don't see many as many win conditions for Team WE today. So maybe FPX and maybe TS, top esports, but that's about it for me. So, all right. Well, enjoy, if you enjoyed the video, like I said, hit the like button. But that's all I got for you guys. Have a good one. See ya.